Hey, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. Let's get open for business here on this Thursday morning. And guys, I got great news. We are under the 120 day mark. We are down to 119 days, 11 hours, 55 minutes, and 15 seconds away from kickoff of the 20. 19 season guys i know that when you look at that and say 119 days but keep in mind we started that clock out at 226 so we're almost halfway there from that point well okay not exactly another 10 days we will be or so but anyway we're knee deep in Dak prescott getting ready to get his contract and understand that a lot of people are losing their mind that, man, he's going to get paid $30 million. Man, just pay the man. Understand it's his turn. Then the next guy will get paid more. And then the next guy, and the next guy, and the next guy. Better to get this thing done and out the way now. Because if you're further down the line, it's going to cost you even more in tomorrow's dollars. Some of the comments that uh, you, you see about Dak Prescott, it makes me wonder, are you really Cowboy fans? Because regardless of who wears the star, they are wearing the star. That is your team. And it's not about one player. It's about the team. You may not like what he does. You may criticize and things. But some of this stuff is, it just ain't right. It's just not proper. It, it amazes me because... Some of the comments you get are people are saying things like, well, you're going to pay $30 million to a guy who just hands off the ball. That's all he does? He's no good? He can't put a team on his shoulders? And I say that a lot of you who make comments don't really understand football that much. Your football IQ isn't that great. Because, you know, people will say, man, if we only had Tom Brady. And Tom Brady is the best. Tom Brady is incredible. Tom Brady has got six rings. And I know as soon as I start bringing this kind of stuff up, people are going to say, I'm mad. No, I'm not bad. I'm not crazy. You can't compare him to New England. Well, actually, if you take the first three years of our young quarterback, who, if you go by the list, here was an interesting one that Miss Jackie, shout out to Miss Jackie, sent me if you take all the quarterbacks in the history history of the nfl that have had 20 or more touchdown passes every year and less than 10 interceptions under the age of 25 the list has one person on it and that's dak prescott What's amazing is, I want you to, to you, you, this, this might blow your mind, so, so just, just bear with me here. Super Bowl champions, New England Patriots, team that is forever, ever good. Hate those guys. Sick of seeing them in the Super Bowl every year. New England averages 27.2 yards per game, 394, uh, 93 yards per game. Tom Brady... Averages 266 yards passing per game, which is eighth in the NFL. But what's amazing is they actually average 127 yards per game rushing, fifth. New England is fifth. And I don't think a lot of people realize that. Because what you have to understand is they don't have a great running back. They run the ball by committee but they do run the ball, and they run it very effectively. And it's a balance in there. That's part of the reason why New England is so hard to stop. It's not one great wide receiver like Antonio Brown. It's not one great running back like Le'Veon Bell. It's literally, when you go down the list, and you look at it, you got Sonny Michael, 930 yards. You got James White with 425 yards. You got Rex Burthead with 186. You got uh, Patterson with 228. And when you look at the receivers, they don't have 
a thousand yard wide receiver. But they got six guys that are over 500. Excuse me, five guys that are over 500 yards. James White, 751. Julian Edelman, 850. Rod Gronkowski, 682. Josh Gordon, 720. Chris Hogan, 532. See, the problem for defenses is if you shut out James White, well, Julian Edelman or Rob Gronkowski. Who do you key on? Is it going to be a pass or is it going to be a run? Because they're good at running the ball, they're good at passing the ball. That's one of the things that helps Tom Brady be great. He's not having to force the ball into double coverage to wide receivers all the time. He goes through and he can pick out the open man because clearly you've got all of these different pieces that one of these guys are going to be open. And he's got great pass protection, which gives him time. And if you give a decent quarterback time, he will eventually find somebody who's open. So I want you to take a look at that, and then I want you to take a look. This is our Dallas Cowboys this past year. 348 yards. We were about 50 yards less than New England. Passing yards, 221 a game, 23rd. Not, not great. I mean, they're 8th, we're 23rd. But here's an interesting thing. After we got Amari Cooper, those last eight games of the season, we averaged 278 yards a game passing. 278. Tom Brady for the season averaged 266. So clearly having Amari Cooper made a difference. And had those numbers been out, Dak Prescott would have actually had more yards than Tom Brady. And I know you can't say, well, you can't say that because you didn't. I, I know, but, but I'm just using this for argument purposes. And I know people are going crazy and they're saying, oh, you are lost your mind. You know, because we have the perception that the only thing Dak Prescott does is hand off the football. It's just Zeke Elliott. The Cowboys, anybody can do that. Well, here's what's interesting. Take a look. Where's my pen? Let me see. Take a look at this right here. 122 yards rushing per game. We were 10th in running the football last year. Tom Brady, fifth, fifth. I didn't believe that at first myself. But see, what people think about is they think about, oh, man, look at Big Ben. Big Ben he threw for over 5,000 yards. Why can't we get that? Damn, I want 5,000 yards. His 5,000 yards was sitting on the couch during the playoffs. Generally speaking, a whole lot of yards passing doesn't always equate to winning. And clearly... There's a little bit more to it than handing off the football because by people's logic, then New England doesn't ever run the ball. It's all Tom Brady's arm. But I hate to tell you, that's not the case. It's a balance. And I want to go back to our Dallas Cowboys. Uh, in... Let me do this. Sorry, guys. Let me go back to our Dallas Cowboys in 2016. Because a lot of people think, oh, man, we need to have this great wide receiver and this great wide receiver and things. And what I want you to understand is 
it's not about having just one great wide receiver. And that's the mistake that I think that you're going to see happen with the Raiders because they're going out with Antonio Brown. Oh, we got a great wide receiver. You know, we're going to be great. Well, it doesn't necessarily work that well. Because here's what happened for our Cowboys in 2016. Why don't you take a good look at this? 2016 was great, with the exception of losing in the playoffs, 13 and 3. What was interesting is we didn't have a thousand yard wide receiver. Cole Beasley, 832 yards. Jason Witten, 673. Des Bryant, 796. Terrence Williams, 596. And Zeke, who now is doing a hell of a lot more, 363. And that is how you want this Dallas Cowboys offense to work. Because if you can do that, if you can get Amari Cooper... 1,000, 1,100 yards. If you can get Randall Cobb, six, 700 yards. If you can get Michael Gallup, six, 700 yards. If you can get Jason Witten, 500 yards. If you get Zeke Elliott, 700 yards. You get this spread out. I know it's not great fantasy numbers. But the problem is, I call it death by a thousand cuts. You're a defensive coordinator. You know you got Zeke Elliott behind a great offensive line. You know he can eat you up. Now you got an Amari Cooper over here who can take it to the house. He can go deep. He can do a crossing route that'll be deadly. You got a Randall Cobb who can play in the slot or he can go outside. He can even come on reverses out the backfield. Hmm. He can take it to the house. You got a Michael Gallup who can be a deep threat who came on as the season went on. You got a Blake Jarwin who, damn, he got three touchdown passes against the Giants. He can catch and he can block. And then you got Father Time, Jason Witten, who just always seems to be open. You, my friend, defensive coordinator, what do you do? Who do you stop? You put eight men in the box to try to stop the run and have all these wide receivers now that can catch the ball? Do you have the safety, single safety high? Try and cover those guys? Do you double team Amari Cooper when you've got Randall Cobb? That's ideally what you want. You want to be that team that's in the top five in rushing and the team that's in the top ten in passing. Because these kinds of numbers, to spread the ball around, anybody can beat you. But losing one won't stop you. And that's how this offense is designed. And we need to get around, away from all this thing where we think that our offense is just garbage, that our quarterback sucks. Look at what the teams that are doing that are winning. It's not the guys that are throwing 5,000 yards. I can go back and point to Drew Brees and his 5,000-yard seasons, and they're 7-9. and nine. But once they got a running game, all of a sudden, New Orleans is hell to beat. The Rams, running game, they're hell to beat. And that's how it works. You have to have both. So I know the haters out there will say I'm crazy, of course, because that's what they always do, that Mark Holmes is crazy. But I'm putting out the numbers, the real stats, the real facts, and you can decide for yourself what you believe. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, Thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing. See you soon.